Hey YouTubers, Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're talking Chevy Cruze and obviously the radiator that holds all the radiator fluid. It will leak at some point as the car ages and you drive it for many years. However, in this video, I wanna show you other parts that are tied to the coolant system that can actually fail and cause a leak. Let's take a look. Here is the Chevy Cruze we are working on today. Let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat and pull the release handle for the hood and open the hood. Hood is now open. We are looking at the front of the engine and a few things I want to point out. Let's start with the top right corner. This is your overfill reservoir tank that the coolant is added to. And a lot of people have experienced cracks down in this portion right here where it connects to the larger hose, as well as up top where it connects to the smaller return line. Some Chevy Cruze owners are experiencing cracks here or leaks here and it's probably best just to replace the old reservoir tank and add a new one. I recommend the Dorman brand because the new Dorman brand is far better designed and much more durable and reliable because inside these plastic portions that extend out and the hose connects to are metal tubes or metal rods in both the bottom and upper portion of the tank. And when the clamp itself is compressed and secured on this portion, it does not break the actual plastic. So that's one place that the coolant can leak. And from here, you just wanna follow the return hoses. And this basically goes into your water outflow valve. And it's a very oddly and unique shaped part. And it's very possible that this could fail right here if you've got any signs of leaking with coolant right here or anywhere down where it connects to the actual engine down below, you will need to replace this water outlet valve. Continuing on, there's a few hoses that feed off the water outflow valve. You want to verify each of those hoses are not leaking any coolant. And follow that hose all the way down to the bottom. It goes way down in there and then feeds into your actual radiator. Which is our next part that we want to reference and talk about. There is your radiator fan here. When your engine gets to a certain temperature, it turns on and blows air at the engine and adds a little bit of cooling protection for the engine to help it cool down. You want to check the entire radius of the radiator itself and verify that there are no leaks there. Feeding on to the opposite side, you've got your bleeder valve here. I don't know if you can see it, just that little plastic Phillips screw which is inside there. It's possible that your bleeder valve itself, since it is plastic and has a rubber gasket on the tip of it, it's possible that that could be leaking as well. So verify no leaks there. Continuing down your hoses down in here. As you can see here where it connects to the radiator, it's possible that you might have a leak there, so verify and do a thorough inspection of the connection point as well as the hose. That hose is going to feed upward and connect itself to a harness that then feeds in and connects to the thermostat as you can see here. The thermostat itself connects with three bolts and inside this thermostat is a rubber gasket. And when time goes by and that rubber gasket warps or fails, it begins to leak at this connection point. So in the event that you have bubbling when the engine is warm and you see a little bit of coolant bubbling at the seam right here, whether it's on this side or the opposite side right down in there, chances are it's only a matter of time before that gasket fully fails and coolant starts spraying out everywhere. So if you see it bubbling, it might be a good idea to tackle that sooner rather than later. And Continuing inward from the thermostat, your thermostat actually connects to the water pump here, that portion of the engine, and it feeds under this pulley. And behind that pulley lies your water pump itself, and there is a rubber gasket that that water pump has on it in between the water pump and the engine, and in the event that that seal fails, you're going to get leaks. So in the event that you see any signs of leaking in this area, chances are you might need a new water pump. And feeding outward, on the back side of your water pump, it comes out. There's a rubber hose that feeds all the way back to here, feeds upwards toward there, and it goes into a connection point. It looks like it's a three-way connection point. And let me hop to the other side. The lower right portion where it connects, that hose will actually feed all the way down here. And where does it come out of? Right there, and it connects to the lower portion of your reservoir tank. So a lot of parts and a lot of hoses that can get to a point where they leak and you want to do a thorough inspection of your entire coolant system 
And in the event that any of these portions are leaking, you want to address it immediately because in the event that you do not, you are only making your coolant systems cooling worse. And that's not good. You want this engine to be properly cooled at all times when it's running. So with that said, there are a few parts that we have replaced. Number one, we replaced this reservoir tank, pulled off the old one, inserted the new, more reliable and durable part. We also replaced the old thermostat because it was bubbling and leaking at the seam there. That rubber gasket failed. And that's a very friendly DIY do-it-yourself project. And you can replace that pretty quick and easy. And we have a step-by-step -step video at the end of this video. You will see a step-by-step -step video on how to replace your thermostat. You'll also see a step-by-step -step video on how to replace your reservoir tank. We also have a step-by-step -step video on how to properly and carefully and safely flush your radiator system and remove all that fluid. And the last video you'll see, which is a very important video, is a video on how to properly, safely, and correctly add coolant to your system. There is a very specific way and steps to follow when you add coolant to the Chevy Cruze engine. It's not as easy as just pouring it in there and securing the cap and turning the engine on and going. There are very specific steps that you have to follow, so definitely check that out. That's it, YouTubers. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely go to your settings, turn on your YouTube notification bell. Once you do that, every video that we upload, you will be notified. You will be able to stay up to date with us, and that will be awesome. Hey, thanks again for watching.